In my ongoing quest through the mystical realm of AI image creation, a persistent specter haunts my path. Yes, it's the vexing curse of phantom watermarks and elusive signatures etched upon the very fabric of the images being generated. Now these arcane symbols, not of my making, appear as if by some mischievous sorcery marring the purity of these digital tapestries. Yet undeterred, I press onward, seeking the ancient wisdom needed to banish these unwanted incantations and reclaim the untamed glory of these creations. <laughs> hey everyone, I'm Jeremy. Welcome back to Mind Renders. I hope you guys enjoyed that intro, just trying something a little different. Uh, yes, today is about those pesky watermarks, signatures, autographs, just things in general that you don't want to see in your images. And more often than not, I find them in my art generations and uh, like fantasy art like you see here. What you see in front of you here is a program that's free and open source. It's called Breadboard. Um, I would do a separate video on this, but the project right now is, has been abandoned by the developer for a different uh, AI related program, which in itself is really amazing. So I might touch on that later. It's called Pinocchio and you may have heard of it because there are videos out there about it. It's pretty awesome. It basically lets you launch all kinds of different AI apps in one app. And that does include focus. Back to the issue at hand, these stinking watermarks. So I'll make this a little bigger and I'll zoom in in post-processing as well so you can see how gaudy this watermark is. And these watermarks and autograph signatures, whatever you want to call them, most often show up when you generate images of art. And I'm going to show you guys how to get rid of those in a very nice, easy, efficient way using focus. So let's jump over there and get started. Okay, here we are in focus. I have it zoomed in to, what is this, 175%. <laughs> so you can see a little bit easier as I work here. And what's really cool about this is you don't really have to use any advanced settings for in-painting and out-painting. Really, you can just use the default settings. So I'm going to start with doing that, and I'm going to click on Input Image down here in the bottom left. We're going to go to the In-Paint or Out-Paint tab. And we're going to start really simple. We're just going to browse for the image. I'm going to grab that one that has the signature on it down here. And you'll notice when you hover over the image, you can see that brush. And here's a little secret is it, when you're hovered over this image, if you click control on your keyboard and then scroll at the same time together, you can make your brush bigger or smaller by scrolling up and down. So just a quick tip, you can do it over here as well on the slider. I like to get a good size that's, you know, that can fit in this little crevice down here. Now, now I'll zoom in so you can see this a little bit better, but here is the trick. When you're doing this, make sure, you may have to lift up on the clicker and click again, but make sure you paint out a little bit further so it kind of adds a little bit more area to it so it doesn't look so weird. And you'll see when it turns out here at the end. And as we scroll down here, make sure none of these output directions are ticked. And for the method, you just want to make sure in paint or out paint default is selected here. And then all we have to do is click generate. And this will take 30 steps because it uses the uh, default settings and that is 30 steps. Now you can do this using a turbo model. So if you have one, for example, that takes five steps, load it up and click generate. One thing to note is by default, it will only generate two images if you don't use the advanced section. If you want more than two, you just tick advanced and then slide the image number up to four or six. I, re I recommend at least four to six images. So we'll keep it at five for now. If you are running a turbo model, I recommend six to eight because for whatever reason, the turbo models, when you're out painting or in painting, uh, they take a few more tries to get you know, a better result. And you'll see that here in a second. All right, all that's left to do is make sure that we have our painting done where we want the signature to be removed and then just click on generate and watch the magic unfold before our eyes. So again, this will take 30 steps. I'll probably fast forward this so we can see the outcome here momentarily. I'm coming back in here mid-generation and I'm gonna show you a couple of results I'm getting. It's looking good. I mean, I'm impressed already with what with what's going on here with these generations. And you can see when I click here in the bottom right corner, how things change and how it kind of adds its own iteration of what should be in that corner. Poof, just like that, all of the images have been generated. I am pretty happy with the results here. So if we were to take a look at all of these, I would say between this one at the bottom and this one right here, which is the one we looked at earlier. And yeah, we can, you can make it a little bigger so you can float through them here. You can see it did add some stones in there. This one's pretty nice. That one's pretty cool. When they're zoomed in and you look at them, they look really nice. So that 
that turned out really good. I'm happy. One thing I will tell you though, is sometimes when you do this, you'll actually get another signature that ends up being generated in there. Talk about annoying. So yeah, you'll be pressing the generate button a couple times, but the tool's there for you to use. It's free. I can't complain. And like I said, you don't have to make any changes to the aspect ratio, the speed, the style, the model or anything, because it doesn't take any of that into effect because basically all it's doing is using the model to change the small area that you brushed. So just keep that in mind when doing this. However, if you do decide to use a, like for example, a turbo model, you do have to make the changes to your guidance scale um, because most turbo models have a certain guidance scale that you have to use. And you also, when you're using focus, you have to make sure that you come in here and you change the sampler to DPMPP underscore SDE. And then the sample steps to five or six or whatever that they call for in that particular turbo model. So that's a little bit more advanced, um, but you can do it. If you know how to use a turbo model and I have shown how to do that previously on the channel, then you already know how to do this. So you're good to go. So there you have it. Take this as a very basic intro to outpainting and I'll get into uh, more detailed guides in the future. Again, I'm starting with very basic stuff. <laughs> so bear with me here. Um, I've had a lot of people in the comments on my video say, can you do a video on that? Can you do a video on this? Uh, yeah, I got some good stuff planned. So stay toned. And before we dip out, I know I'm going to get a lot of questions about this breadboard app and what is it? What are, can you show us more about it? Yes, of course, here is a hot take I wanted to do here because I don't plan on doing a full video on this. So I'll just do a quick overview. Uh, this is breadboard. It's free and open source. Very, very awesome software. Uh, I have this uh, streamlining my images across the network. Um, it doesn't do any of the hosting or anything. The images are hosted on my AI machine, which is the computer I'm on right now. And I shared out the folder where the images are outputting. Um, so I can use breadboard, this application right here on my laptop upstairs, and I can also generate images from there. So it all works out really nice. And what happens here is when you click, I do a lot of wildcard stuff lately. I've been, this is all wildcard generated stuff. So I have three wildcards going here. I have a color, I have a land structure and I have a building structure. So I'm having, I, and I want to know what those wild cards are when they're being generated. So all I have to do is click an image and I can see the prompt right here along with the seed, the sampler, everything you need to know about the image. So it does a lot of uh, stable diffusion uh, metadata, all the PNG embedded info. Now you can't see that with using regular focus, unfortunately, I will say that. So if you try to use this using regular focus, I don't believe it embeds PNG data yet, but I use what's called ruined focus lately for the last, I'd say week I've been using ruined focus, oh, an amazing app. It's basically a fork of focus. It has a, a few different settings. Some are good, some are kind of weird, but the developer is very active um, for that fork. And one really cool thing about Rune Focus is you can generate unlimited images if you set the slider to zero, which is something I love and I do all the time because when I'm working, I just let that puppy run. And I have this here running in the background, uh, popping images, which is really cool because every time it finds a new image, it does like a live update and it makes a little popping noise as you heard at the beginning of the video. And it just lets you know that there's a new video and if I, or video, a new image. And if I really like that image, I just click that little heart icon and save it for later and we're good to go. All right. I wish I could blow you guys away with more information, but you know what? It's about time to close off the video here. Uh, there's a lot going on guys. I got a discord server. I've had it for a while. I keep forgetting to tell you guys about it, but if you guys want to chat and hang out, you want to show us your artwork, jump on over to our discord server. I'll put the link in the description below. You can also find the link on my website. If, if, if I forget to do that, check out my website at mindrenders.com. I do all kinds of articles over there and I share my workflows. Um, all of my wild cards are over there that you can grab and use. So there's some valuable information over there. Check it out. Subscribe to the newsletter. And if you like this content, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to get started on the next video. Bye for now.